Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial about compositing realistic smoke elements and atmosphere in Blackmagic Fusion. In this tutorial, you'll learn a simple trick to composite smoke and atmosphere realistically into your scene. Let's dive right in. Welcome to Blackmagic Fusion. Let's take a look at our elements before we start the compositing process. Our first element is a render of this phantom spaceship. For the ones that know, it's a spaceship from Halo. It's a little shot that I made. And the second element is a smoky atmosphere. What you might have noticed is that it already tracks into the shot. This is because I've rendered them in camera in Blender as a separate element, just to speed up my composite. So what most people would do is whenever they are compositing a smoky element is they would go and connect this together and remove the alpha gain. And this basically creates a plus effect for the ones that know it is in Photoshop or some other compositing package. And maybe they will take the atmosphere layer and maybe add a little bit of glow or color correction on it and try to integrate it from there. But one of the problems that arises is that the smoke is not really reacting towards the light source. How can we fix this? All right, so let's look at the solution. Instead of trying to create the atmosphere customly ourselves, let's try and have the light source reveal on how much of the smoke is visible. In order to do this, we'll create a channel Boolean node. And we'll connect it. If you hold Alt, this little menu pops up. Let's connect it to the background. Now for the smoke element, connect that to the foreground. And this way, if we check the channel boolean node, you'll now see the fog on top and the background behind it. Let's take a look at the operation. Change this to multiply. And the result is a bit of a weird mix between the two layers. This is not what we want. Now, in order to fix this, let's go to the original render and start adding a blur node. What we want to do is we want to sort of blow up these light sources and use that in our multiply to have that light up the fog. Let's start moving the slider. And what you'll see that especially those light sources get really blown up or blown out by the blur node. And now if we check the multiply node itself, we can see that it lights up only the fog. So now you can see how that looks. And this is a very organic effect, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have the effect, we can start to put this on top of our render. Let's go ahead and copy our original plate and start to put this layer on top of it. So we can just add a simple merge node and this one, the top layer will connect as the foreground and the render itself will connect as the background. I will place the render just on top just to make it a little bit more neat. And if we select this, and we press tab, we can create an underlay. Let's go and take a look at the merge node. And on this, we'll create the alpha gain. And we'll decrease it like that. And now it's on top of our spaceship. Now, in order to have a little bit more control, we can start to add a color corrector towards effect itself. So what usually helps if you try and add a little bit more contrast in there, if you hold control, you can make sort of very subtle steps. And I'm looking for to get a little bit more range between those very high values and the more deep crevices into that smoke. And that will make it a little bit more, call it determined, and it will just be a little bit more visible uh, towards the viewer. So we have that now. What we can also try and do is for that original render layer here, can try and push it a little bit. So add a color corrector node, maybe some gain, try and push it a little bit more. This is of course towards your liking. And now if we start to preview it, you can see that looks just really nice. So it really starts to light up only around those lights and then it starts to taper off. And you can see that probably the effect is a little bit too much. It's really sort of up to you to get it in a little bit more subtle. I would probably go ahead and really Sort of decrease it so that it is more of a subtle effect. Now, another thing that I would do is next to sort of having this very located atmosphere effect, we can go ahead and try to copy this 
and really also get a pass in that's just a little bit more broadly lit, like by the entire range of the shot. So let's just go ahead into this layer here and we'll add way more blur. So even like past 100, let's try something like maybe 250, something like this. And let's take a look on how that looks. And you can see that sort of more around it is lit. And this just gives sort of an extra range to the effect. So we have this sort of more contained range and then also this more broader range. So let's go ahead and also merge this onto it. And now you can see that we have sort of that more broader range as well. And I would probably go ahead and try to get that in a little bit more subtle. I don't want to over exaggerate things too much. It's really sort of a complementary effect. And this gives more range to it as well. And one final thing that we also can do is just the effect by itself. So this time, let's do it just the classic way. Just get rid of these elements itself. Add another merge node towards it and add a foreground to it make sure that the alpha gain is down maybe get rid of this effect and really go ahead and try to very subtly uh, get a little bit of that smoke in there it's really just just a little bit to just get the blend in so this way we have built up the effect and you can see that there's a nice range we sort of have the core of the effect happening around the light source then there's a little bit of tapering off happening around the sides. And then there's still sort of that general atmosphere in that scene that's just on the very sides and on, on the rest of the shot. All right, so now that you understand how the basic element works, it's time to add more elements in order to complete the atmosphere. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to add all the elements that I used in the original, because then I would be busy for quite a while. But let's just take a look at another element that I rendered. This time it's a little bit of snow, so this comes from Blender. It's basically just a particle system with a couple of spheres attached to it with motion blur toggle on, a bit of turbulence in there, and I've rendered that out. So let's take a look on how we can add this effect to the scene as well. So in order to start, let's connect this, hold Alt again as a background, go ahead and connect it with the foreground. And this time, yeah, let's just really start with that element, adding the gain like this. And now we have the snow falling again, which is great. Now, let's go ahead and take the blur layer. If we hold Alt, we create the dot just in the pipe before it. And let's go ahead and use that again. Use the blur node. Really exaggerated the effect. Maybe make a little bit more room in here. We'll go ahead and create a channel boolean effect again. I want to create this as a background and this as the foreground. Use that again as multiply. And let's start to add that color corrector again. Boost up the visibility a little bit to our liking. Then go ahead and create another merge node. The result of that effect, let's connect that to the foreground again and put it the alpha gain down. And now you can see that we have the basis of the effect and the area where the snow itself would be lit. And now you can see that that lights up around the smoke as well. And if we want to sort of decrease the overall snow effect, we can do so by creating a color corrector here, maybe dialing that down until it's to our liking. There's one thing that we can still do. If we scroll through footage, we can see that some of that smoke is also going through that pillar. Now, if we have the luxury of a depth pass, and this is something you'll have in every 3D software, you can toggle it as a render pass. It's called depth. All software like Maya, Blender, whatever you are using has these kind of passes. And what you'll get if you have a depth pass is this sort of white image. Now, in order to use this, we can use an auto gain 
and this will normalize that, that path. So whatever is close to the camera, it will make it dark. And if it's further away, uh, it will make it more bright. Now, in order to play around with the range of this pause, you can't just use a normal color corrector node. We have to use a node called bitmap. And this will allow us to control range of the node a bit more. So hold Alt and connect it to the image. And if we just play around with this setting, I have to look through it again. You can now see that I can control the range a little bit more. So I can really determine on which areas the snow is going to be visible and what not. So in this case, I don't want the snow to be too visible in front of the pillars and a little bit more visible behind the pillars. So I can try and sort of uh, control a map this way. All right, so we have our depth pass correctly set up and now we want to use it to be able to cut out pieces of our atmosphere uh, to have our scene blend in with the 3D just a little bit better. So in order to do that, let's just go ahead and take all of those elements here. And just as the snow as well, I will just go ahead and create an underlay. Let's go ahead and have all of these merge nodes in the same pipe. And this way I'd have to only multiply it with the depth just one time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl X and this is going to cut the merge node. This is important because we still have uh, settings that we changed into this merge node. And just connect it with this. Use Alt, foreground. You can use Alt to create a corner there. And now it's incorporated. Do the same thing here. Control X, Control V to paste it. And connect this up to the foreground as well. Use Alt to create a corner. And now we have kept these settings and everything is all into one layer combined. This is great. So now we can start to incorporate that depth pass. So let's take it. Let's move this over a little bit. Create a little bit of space. Put it over here. And we'll once again create the famous channel boolean node. Hold shift, we can connect it into the pipe. Hold alt, connect that to the foreground and change it to multiply. And now you can see that the effect sort of wraps around uh, the depth of the scene. I'm just going to exaggerate a little bit. This way you can see it. So it connects around the scene. So in order to tweak the effect, because if we look at it now, it's, it sort of has cut off too much of the effect. We can just go to that bitmap node and really start to pull onto this effect. So let's just play around with this. And this way you can see that we can bring it back so that it works the way that we want. So I'm just trying to find the, the proper range for it here. Just takes a little bit of tweaking. And now you can see that the depth is properly incorporated into the scene. And now, of course, we have to do this to the snow layer as well, but you get the idea. Now, doing this with all of your effects will give you the following result. <laughs> Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something new about compositing today. If you still have questions, just make sure to put them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as good as I can. If you like to see the channel grow, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Alright, thank you again and I will see you on the next one.